All right, and happy flipping Monday. Big shout out to HacksRadio.com, the stream that allows the FBI to fulfill their sexual fantasies. Big kiss for Mr. E and the Fixer and the rest of the crew, the hackers and the whackers. And good Lord, uh, the Hacker News was not giving any updates for almost a week now. So the last time you heard from me was last Monday, but we got six things to scroll through here, bring you up to date. First thing up, anonymous hater takes credit for Pirate Bay and WikiLeaks DDoS attack. Some puke. WikiLeaks and Swedish BitTorrent file sharing site Pirate Bay were reportedly battling distributed denial of service attacks for several days earlier this week. The user who goes by the Twitter handle Anonir has been riling up members of the hacktivist group and supporters of TPB with a series of angry posts on Twitter to the extent that anonymous supporters are now demanding to get in contact with him over the social network. WikiLeaks tweeted the status of the website a short while ago. WikiLeaks has been under sustained DDoS attack over the last 72 hours. We are mirroring WikiLeaks website in case you can't reach it. Uh, and on near also later posted on Pastebin claiming that he works for the FBI and wants to take TPB website down because it is a press release website for anonymous. UK ISP Virgin Media suffered a DDoS attack on the 9th of May, a week after complying with a high court order to block users' access to file sharing websites. The Pirate Bay condemned the action. We do not encourage these actions. We believe in the open and free internet where anyone can express their views, even if we strongly disagree with them and even if they hate us. So don't fight them using ugly methods. DDoS and blocks are both forms of censorship. The five ISPs forced by UK's High Court to impose a block on its customers accessing the Pirate Bay have less than two weeks to comply with the order or face charges of being in contempt of court. The block must be imposed within 30 days from the time the court issued the ruling according to sources. Moving along, next thing up. Quebec, Liberal Party and Education Ministry websites taken down in a massive cyber attack. This sounds outstanding. Two provincial government websites as well as Quebec Liberal Party and Education Ministry websites went down early Saturday morning and remained inaccessible for most of the day. No one has claimed responsibility for the down sites, but Twitter was full of rumors on Saturday pointing to Anonymous, the loose group of cyber activists. The cyber troubles begin hours after a new law, Bill 78, passed the National Assembly. It requires any group of 50 or more people holding a demonstration in the province to inform police eight hours in advance of their planned route and their pertinent details such as the start and end times. One of the anonymous Twitter accounts tweeted on Friday, Quebec considers draconian anti-protest law. Expect us. Anonymous also threatened the website belonging to the province's National Assembly, while some reported that the legislature's website has been taken offline. It was functioning as of 9.25 a.m. on Saturday, referring to the province as Quebecistan. A group wrote, the Rule 78 must die. A spokesman for the Quebec Liberal Party said the party's site was hacked. They, they are attacks that are pretty common, said Michael Rochette. We have been victims of cyber attacks for the past few weeks. Outstanding. Good. Now, next up. GFI Web Monitor, Web Monitoring and Security. With all the threats on the internet, access can present to your users, your data, web security software is one of the most valuable investments you can make. You can get more information about that at thehackernews.com. Next up, IBM Research, domain hacked and defaced. The hacker collective group dubbed Kosovo Hacker Security, or in other words, KHS, targeted IT giant and multinational technology and consulting corporation, IBM. In this attack, KHS successfully hacked into the official site of IBM uh, Researcher. Hackers claimed that the site had a SQL injection and remote code execution vulnerability using which they defaced the website. At the time of the writing, the hack URL was not working, and a mirror of the hack can be seen uh, by visiting thehackernews.com. Now, Facebook in the headlines again, that sleazy platform owned by who I like to call Zuckerfucker, uh, bogus Facebook app spreading Android malware. Uh, third party Android markets have traditionally been the main source of infection since the Android boom and are less strict than the genuine 
uh, play when it comes to bouncing malware. Today, uh, main network reports that users of the mobile devices running Google's Android OS were warned over the weekend against a new fake app of the social networking giant that may lead to potential Android malware. These duplicated applications have the same behavior as their original counterparts in terms of functionality, but they perform an HTTP 302 redirect to another link that's not Facebook related when they detect mobile traffic. What's most concerning is that many of the fake apps based malwares in circulation have purported to be legitimate copies of some of the most popular titles around. No sooner were Android users on red alert for a doggy Angry Birds space app, they were informed of a phony Instagram app wreaking havoc through some of the unverified mediums. The fake apps claim to scan a user's Facebook contacts and list the potential girlfriends or boyfriends among other users. Bitdefender said that while the cross-site scripting is nothing new, this is one of the few times when a direct correlation between Facebook and promoting Android apps via redirecting mobile traffic has been reported. This could be the beginning of paid promotions through Facebook, where Android app developers can actually subscribe to have their apps promoted via Facebook by means of illegitimate surface services. And last but not least, anonymous hackers attack the Indian government over file sharing ban. Anonymous hackers have turned its attention to India, taking down the websites of the Supreme Court and the country's two major political parties and several government sites in retaliation for a court injunction which led to the blocking of several video sharing and BitTorrent sites. Anonymous tweeted saying that it was now India's time to bring in a new government. Namaste India, your time has come to trash the current government and install a new one. Good luck, save TPB, anonymous censorship. The hacking was reported in response to the blocking of torrent site The Pirate Bay and Vimeo.com. While the Supreme Court of India website came back online after a little while, the Congress website was still offline at the time of the filing of this report. The dump Department of Telecommunications website also reportedly came under attack. The group signaled its intent to launch Op India in a YouTube message posted over a week ago which said the following. We have come to the conclusion that the Indian government has failed. It is time that we all rise and stand against the corrupt government. The Department of Telecommunications has ordered Internet service providers to block file sharing sites in India. We cannot let this happen. And one other little note to bring attention to. Uh, Op Stop the Bullshit has been engaged for about a week. That is the bringing together of anonymous and non-anonymous activists under one tag in an effort to take back not only the country of the United States but any other country who has stepped out of line and bows to the corporate elite. If you're on Twitter, please find that tag, search it, support it. Much love to the Hacker News, uh, to Hacks Radio rather, for supporting the Op Stop the Bullshit page at masterofmanythings.com. Thanks for the support, the love, and the tunes. And as long as the update's coming in, I'll see you again on Wednesday. Much love. Be safe. Keep hacking and whacking. Take back the shit that's yours.